The Rays stadium deal could clear a major hurdle today. The Pinellas County Commission will meet to discuss spending over $300 million that would include the new ballpark. Four out of seven votes are needed for the project to get the commission's approval. The St. Petersburg City Council has already approved it. Now, Pinellas Commissioner Dave Eggers says the process feels rushed because they've only held one workshop on this so far, and he's not sure the vote will happen today and whether they can iron out all the details. The process feels rushed. I mean, we've been doing this for a decade now. I mean, I know this is a, a newer proposal, but I mean... Uh... Well, the county's part, he's talking about the county's part. Okay. We, we've been going through a lot of this with the city. Yeah. And of course, they had their vote, and it was to be followed with the with the com- Pinellas Commission to decide. But what he's saying is that they haven't had the same level of scrutiny on the plan as, as the city, and he wants uh, wants to take a closer look at it. Sounds to me like they've got the votes. Uh, Seems like it. In the Pinellas County Commission. Yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a vote today and they move forward with it. Mayor Ken Welch said he would have liked to have seen a unanimous vote because that would show, you know, unity amongst all the members in the county. Right. Uh, whether they get that remains to be seen. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they discuss today and what issues uh, are brought up from the county's perspective versus what we saw from the city. Yeah, the city. Uh, so we're done with all of that. Now it's the county. Once the county uh, signs off on it, then uh, the ball's really rolling. That's right. Things get moving, and uh, they, they need to get this thing uh, ready to go before the end of the lease at Tropicana Field. So, you know, the idea is uh, the sooner they get it approved, the better. Now, everything's been on schedule so far, and uh, if it happens, then, uh, yeah, they'll be able to move forward on the timetable that they had set that they, that they think will uh, keep them on schedule to have the new ballpark ready by their target date. It's hard to believe that uh, we're, we're here. I know, I mean, right? I know that it's actually probably going to happen. Yeah, we've been talking about this for so long. There have been so many debates about which side of the bay the ballpark yeah. was going to be on and all of that, and now we're, we're just about uh, done. We're at the finish line. It's, yeah, that's right. You know, one of the questions, though, remains, will it make a huge difference as far as the attendance at the park? Because that was always the concern yeah. from people over in Tampa, that it's just too far to go, go all the way mm-hmm. to southern Pinellas County, you know, where St. Petersburg is located. And this doesn't change that. I mean, they're no. building the park in the exact same spot. Yeah, I I think you'll probably see a little bit of a boost in attendance just because of, you know, people all that's gonna going wanna, to be yeah, around people it. People are going to want to go check out the new park and see what it's like. It's whether or not they can kind of hold on to that over time. Yeah, it's more of a destination. But but. When uh, we we had talked to race officials a, a while ago, and they're not looking to have attendance figures that are in the top, you know, 10 in the league or anything like that. In fact, uh, they figured uh, right now they're towards the bottom part of the league in attendance. If they could boost that with the new ballpark to, you know, in the low 20s, somewhere in there, that they would actually be okay with that that would seem reasonable to that's also is that okay well i mean it is what it is i think uh for them they've got all that's coming along with the redevelopment uh that's where uh the real money is at um but i think that's kind of what they're expecting it's also why it's going to be a smaller ballpark it's not going to be it's not going to hold as many people they don't need to hold as many people but was Uh, it a good look for the rays to get rid of a rose arena and parade right before this vote (laughs) yeah exactly Uh, you just got rid of this some of the star players and i think that goes to some of the attendance issues uh i I think there are a lot of factors in play but one of them certainly is that they don't keep players who fans get invested in they don't keep them around and uh that that turnover i mean that's frustrating as a fan now i get it they are doing this because they want to be a sustainable winner and it's hard to argue with their strategy because they've been really successful with one of the smallest payrolls in all of baseball going up against the Giants yeah and lowest attendance but uh, that is a a negative for fans when you know fan favorites like Randy Rosarena and others uh, are getting shipped out I mean uh, they've traded just about uh the whole team. <laughs> like oh, the nobody knows days. who's even going to play the next game. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to have to get used to all these new names and new faces uh, soon. Uh, and and what's crazy, too, is this is not a team that's out of it. Yeah. I mean, this is a team that's only like a couple back in the wild card. They have a chance to make the postseason. There are other teams that are just completely out of it, like the Chicago White Sox, one of the worst teams of all time. They're selling off, and you can understand that. The Rays are, are still kind of in it. 
but it, it's because they can get a big return. It's the seller's market right now, so they're taking advantage of it. Again, it's hard to argue with the strategy. It just sucks if you're a fan. How weird would that be if they go to the playoffs and nobody knows who the team is? <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. It's still possible. Yeah. But we'll see what they decide if they have a vote today. Yeah. What else is going on, Chris? So the Democratic National Committee chair is arguing that the enthusiasm for Vice President Harris and her campaign has made Florida and North Carolina competitive for the November election as some Democrats are looking to expand the target map. Now, not all Democrats agree with this strategy, but they believe that there's been a significant change in enthusiasm, meaning people yeah. being interested in the campaign and you know potentially turning out well, there has. for the vote. Yeah, I mean, you look at the donations, you look at the volunteers and, and all of that, and just some of the numbers, the enthusiasm gap is closed. Uh, I would not waste resources on Florida. Uh, even North Carolina, I think, is a bit of a stretch. I think Georgia is going to be interesting to see how things unfold there. But this is Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. Eye on the ball if you're Democrats. Now, there was a new UNF poll that came out this morning and had some really interesting numbers. You had Trump up seven over Kamala Harris. So this is the first Florida poll with uh, the Trump-Harris matchup. And I don't know, that feels about right. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, Trump, significant lead, uh, not quite as big as he had uh, against Biden. Uh, Rick Scott up four. I feel like that might be a little bit tighter than I would have expected. And again, take all these polls with a grain of salt. But these are the the headline numbers. The pot amendment, 64 mm-hmm. percent approval. Mm-hmm. And it needs to clear the 60 percent threshold. This is this is the the headline from this poll. The abortion amendment has 69% support. Wow. Oh, wow. 69%. And what so, that means is Republicans are in favor of it as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge, huge number. Now, again, take all the polls with a grain of salt. Don't know if, you know, that's exactly where it's at, but we have seen it pretty consistently. Pot and abortion have been either right at 60% or over. So it's not like, uh, you know, they're trailing, they're sitting at 50%. There's probably no chance they're going to pass. Um, but that is uh, one heck of a number. And you've got to figure the money is going to continue to pour into the state backing the pot and abortion amendments. I don't think we've seen as much of a rallying against them as we've seen support for them up to this point in terms of spending and advertising and things yes, like that. Yes, but as far as public officials, you got the, the top Republican yeah. in the state, Governor DeSantis, almost everywhere he goes, right. denouncing these amendments and saying that, you know, saying all kinds of things. Yeah. Saying that we're going to have pot smells throughout the state. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nothing it's wrong with that. It's going to turn the state blue, <laughs> you know, things you're like walking that. Walking down the street, you're going to get high. It's, yeah, well, it's be that'll be good world. for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might cool some tempers off a little bit. <laughs> yeah. you know, people exactly. need to chill out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, what else is happening this morning, Chris? Well, Sarasota native has won a medal in Olympic swimming. All right. Emma Wyant took bronze in the 400-meter individual medley. And uh, for folks who don't know what that means, Ryan, that's when they swim each of the four events oh, in one race. They do yeah. all of them. That's that's what a medley is. This so. is in a pool, though, not in the Seine River that's filled with bacteria. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's okay. different. Yeah, the, those were the triathletes, and, and they've yeah. been, uh, their, their trials aren't, haven't even gone on <laughs> because the thing is so filthy. That that was an ongoing problem you know, before the Olympics came. They've worked very hard to clean the river. <laughs> yeah, It's not <laughs> bad, the river. Yeah. After they the should, opening ceremonies, it's back to being polluted. They should all get a gold medal just for going in the river. <laughs> that's right. right. <laughs> that kind of bacteria. Yeah, this was in a pool. And interestingly enough, Sarasota has a number of athletes in the Olympics. They have some rifle shooters. They have some other swimmers. And a story uh, that happened yesterday was at the uh, Evo Gym, where you know amateurs mm-hmm. uh, train for gymnastics. And it turns out that two of the most popular gymnasts on the men's team were training there just a couple mm. weeks ago before they went to Paris. And, and they had a good showing uh, getting the bronze. I think it was the first time they yeah. medaled since uh, 20, 2008. 2008, yeah. yeah. Brody Malone, who was the uh, the only one who was on the Olympic team last time, and then the guy known as Clark Kent, Stephen Nedorozic, who became this like overnight hero after his uh, pommel horse routine clinched the bronze medal for the team yesterday. And if you were watching the coverage, I mean, there was huge anticipation here because – Everything was on the line with this guy. Mm-hmm. The only reason Neta Ruzic was brought to the team was to do one event. <laughs> You've got one job. <laughs> yeah. And he did One it. job. All the other athletes had to do six events. Mm. So that shows you how good he was. Yeah. They, they brought him in sort of not really a secret weapon, but as like a, 
a guy who would get a really high score so that they could have a higher average because I guess the U.S. team overall is weak on pommel horse. It's a lot of pressure. Yeah, and he was the last athlete on the last event for the U.S., and he delivered. And NBC had like a countdown clock to when he was going to do his event because, you know, the whole (laughs) country is waiting to see if the team's going to get the bronze the first time in 16 years that we've gotten a medal in men's gymnastics. And he delivered. It was a it was a really cool moment. And even cooler for the kids in um, in Sarasota at that gym. Oh, I bet they were fired up. Yeah. Yeah, they had just seen the guy a couple of weeks ago and then they got to see him on the world stage perform and win. Did you see what Peacock is doing on their app? This is really cool. Like, I'm not going to subscribe, but it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> they have this thing called Gold Zone. So it's like Red Zone for the NFL, yeah. where in the Red Zone uh, channel, you can just see whenever a team's in the Red Zone when they're about to score. Well, this, it just shows gold medal events. Yeah. Oh, and, that's cool. Yeah, isn't that pretty cool? I'm not going to subscribe either, well, but no, I cool. subscribe. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. I, I haven't seen the gold medal thing, but they had something earlier where they showed all the shots on goal for soccer. Oh, that's all the games. cool. <laughs> so, you don't that's have to awesome. watch the game. You just watch the shots. <laughs> yeah. It was super cool. And I was watching this thing for like 20 minutes. <laughs> I didn't have no idea it. the game was so exciting. You know, but um, anyway, it's, it's pretty cool what they've been able to do because some of the complaints – about uh, NBC's coverage is that if you watch the TV coverage in primetime, mm-hmm. it's just a few hours, and they were really focused on just American athletes exclusively. And if you want to see all of it, if you want to see yeah. like an entire event with the whole field, they've got it on their app, and, and you can watch it that way. Now, the only problem is the commercials. There's two uh, tiers. Oh, is that right? There's the commercial free so. tier, yeah. which is what we have, mm-hmm. and then there's like you pay double and then you get no commercials. I don't know what that's like. I'm right. sure it's a lot better because you know you're not going to get these annoying commercial breaks. But the bottom line is, if you like the Olympics, they have them all there. I mean, you can watch like archery and badminton and you all can the other start stuff getting too. into this stuff like <laughs> yeah. when they've got those features and then obviously if there's an american in it you're rooting for team usa that's so right. that's that's pretty neat all right chris trankman with today's top stories chris thanks so much thank you